everybody. Today we're talking about how to measure yourself. Understanding body measurements are a crucial part of achieving a good fit in your clothes. It can be handy to keep a chart of your body measurements that you can refer back to with every pattern you sew. And important to regularly recheck your body measurements as we all change over time. This guide has been designed to help you measure alone, but if you can find a friend to offer a second pair of hands, that will make it even easier. Let's get started. Nice and easy, we'll start at the waist. Your natural waist is the point where you're able to twist and bend from, not necessarily where you wear your trousers or skirts. Some people refer to it as the narrowest point of your torso, but of course that's not the case for most figures. The easiest way to find your waist is to place the tape measure or a piece of string if more comfortable around where you think your waist is and then start to bend and move. The tape measure will want to sit in the perfect position, so let it move up or down if it's pulling that way. Remember to breathe. When you've found your waist, you can measure it or measure the piece of string you used. Your bust is the circumference around your rib cage at the fullest part of your bust. Remember to breathe and keep the tape measure parallel to the floor. The upper bust, also known as the high bust, is the measurement under your armpits above your bust point. This isn't a measurement listed on pattern envelopes, but a helpful technique for picking your pattern size if you are C cup or larger. If you happen to have quite a large bust for your frame, choosing a pattern based on your bust measurement may mean that the garment ends up falling off your shoulders. In this case, use your upper bust measurement to pick the size and then try a full bust adjustment. This is where you add extra tissue into the bust area of your pattern pieces before you start sewing. Hip measurements aren't always taken where your hip is physically found on your body. Here you're just trying to record the part of your lower half that is the fullest. This could be around your hip or your rear. If you're seated for long periods of time or are a wheelchair user, you should also take your measurements in a seated position. This is because our body mass shifts position when we sit and measurements can increase. You wouldn't want to make something form fitting and discover it's tight and uncomfortable as soon as you sit down in it. Height is a tricky one to do alone. You may find it helpful to mark a point on the inside of a door frame and then measure to that point after stepping away. A little piece of marking tape or a small pencil mark that rubs away is all you need. Neck to waist is a handy one for working out if the bodice waist point on your pattern will fall at the right place. Measure from the nape of your neck to your waist point. If you're struggling to reach, try our handy tip with the door frame again here are some additional measurements you may find helpful. Bicep. Measure around the fullest part of your upper arm and use this to check close fitting sleeves won't be too tight. Neck. Measure around your neck gently and remembering to breathe in and out. Now you can use this to check shirt collars. Thigh. A helpful measurement for when you're making trousers. This will ensure close fitting trouser legs won't be too tight. Shoulder point to shoulder point. Measure across from the hinge of your shoulder to the other side. Crotch length and front back rise. When you're making trousers, it's so helpful to measure around the full crotch, sometimes called crutch in sewing circles. Take a piece of string and measure from the front waist to the back waist, making sure your string isn't riding up. If making low rise trousers, measure to the point you'd like them to sit. Rise is the length between the crotch seam and waist point on a pair of trousers so you want to know how long this is in the front and the back individually. Using your string again, measure each half individually and jot down the totals. Now you have a fantastic set of measurements which you can use to pick your pattern size or make regular fit adjustments.